So today we are doing the most important lesson in calculus, which is something called derivatives. Okay. So derivatives, remember in the last video, it just means it's the same thing as the slope, which in IB math is the same thing as gradient. So uh, before what I'm about to teach you right now, the formula is you would need two points, right? And use uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we would need two points. Um, we learned in the last video that if you have a, right, a curve, um, to find the derivative or to find the gradient of a tangent, uh, you do the, you take the point, you draw a line that is tangent to it. So the slope is going to be negative because we're walking down the hill. So your line would be something like that. And you'd find the slope of this line. Um, but again, you would need two points, right? So what I'm teaching you today is what if we don't have two points? We just have one point like this, like if I tell you x is 3 and I wanted to find the derivative or the slope at that point, um, we're going to learn a key thing or a key rule um, on how to do that. It is in your formula booklet. This formula is there, but I'm going to have us practice it so much that you're probably not even going to need to use that, uh, the formula booklet, okay? So this is the formula um, on how to find the gradient or the slope at any point right? So you're going to take this exponent right here. You're going to bring it to the front. So it's going to be n times x. And then you're going to take the exponent and do one less than it was before. So if it was a 5, 5 minus 1 is 4, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, so pro tip, exponent comes, gets kicked to the front, and then make the new exponent one less than it was before. Okay, so we're going to practice this till you probably get sick of it. And you're like, oh, hey, this is really, really simple. So the first notation is f of x is equal to x squared. First example, so we're going to do f prime of x, which means the derivative of f of x. So we're going to take this exponent right here. We're going to kick it in the front. So it's going to be 2 times x. And then we're going to do 2 minus 1. Okay, so how do we simplify that, right? 2x cannot be simplified. 2 minus 1 is 1 but we get pretty lazy in math, so we can write the derivative of, or f prime of x as 2x, okay? So the derivative of x squared is equal to 2x. There is a little bit of a joke here. The derivative of Amazon is Amazon Prime, okay? All right, so that was just a little quick commercial break. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do this one, right? So remember that y is the same thing as f of x, so it's just a different notation. So the derivative of y is going, uh, the yes, the derivative of y is going to be dy dx. And we're going to do the same thing, right? Take this exponent, kick it to the front, right? Now pause, right? This is 4. There's already a 3 there, right? So what do you think we're going to do with this? It's not going to become 43, right? It's going to become 4 times 3. And then you're going to put the x down. And then you're going to do take the exponent and subtract 1 from it, right? 1 less than it was before. So now let's go ahead and simplify this. 4 times 3 is equal to 12. We bring the x down, and 4 minus 1 is equal to 3, okay? So dy dx, or the derivative of y, is equal to 12x cubed, right? Uh, pretty simple. So... A pro tip for derivatives, right, is you're going to take the original function and make it more calculus friendly uh, before doing the derivative. So what do I mean by that? We're going to go ahead and try a couple of examples that look like this, okay? So now we have 4 over x squared, okay? I want to remind you that this is the same thing as 4x to the negative second. Because if it's negative on top, it gets kicked to the bottom. If it's negative on the bottom, it gets kicked to the top, okay? So now, what is f prime of x, okay? We're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to take this exponent, kick it to the front. So f prime of x is going to equal, right? We're going to take that exponent, which is negative 2. We're going to kick it to the front, so it's going to be negative 2 times the 4 that was already there, x to the, and we're going to do 1 less than negative 2, or negative 2 
minus 1. And so what does this become, right? Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. X and negative 2 minus 1, if you plug that into the calculator, is negative 3. And I can rewrite that as negative 8 over x to the third, okay? So f prime of x is equal to negative 8 over x to the third power, right? Pause. Okay, so the reason why I said pause is because I'm going to go ahead and add another problem that now has three different parts, right? We have 2x to the third, we have 4x over 3, and we have 3x squared, okay? So just think of this as three separate parts. Uh, let me just go ahead and switch colors real quick. So now I'm going to find dy dx or the derivative of y. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just go ahead and do each part separately. So this exponent gets kicked to the front. There's already a 2 there. So 3 times 2 gives us 6 x and then 1 less than the exponent before, right? That's the, the rule. So 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. Okay, so that's first part's done. Beautiful. I put a plus sign. Here there's an imaginary 1, so 1 times 4 gives me 4. Um, x, the exponent becomes 1 less than it was before, which is 0, and then the 3 is still on the bottom. Okay, leave the denominator the same. And then there's another plus sign, and 3 times 2, right? Bring that exponent to the front, so 2 times 3 is equal to 6 x and 2 minus 1 is equal to 1, okay? Now let's see if we can go ahead and simplify this any way possible. So dy dx is equal to 6x squared is simplified as much as it can be. Um, x to the 0, do you know what this is? Any number, here's a quick commercial break, any number raised to the 0 power is always equal to 1, okay? So like for example, if I had 5 to the 0 power, that's equal to 1, negative 5, if I had negative 5 to the 0 power, that's also equal to 1, okay? So this right here just becomes 1, and 1 times 4 is equal to 4. The 3 stays on the bottom, plus, uh, remember we don't need that 1 right there, so this is going to be plus 6x. Okay, so I'll go ahead, just give you some time to write that down. I made one mistake. I didn't bring down the squared right here. So it's supposed to be 6x squared. So the derivative of y is 6x squared plus 4 over 3 plus 6x. Okay. Um, now remember that derivative again is the gradient of a tangent line. Uh, again, a gradient is the same thing as slope. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick example. Um, of how you can go ahead and apply what it is that we just did up on top now to the bottom, okay? All right, um, before we do that, I'm going to do two separate problems just to make sure we get the concept of derivatives. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take this uh, equation that we have uh, and we're going to make it more calculus friendly. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we can rewrite this as 2 x to the negative 1, right? There's no exponent, there's an imaginary 1, and it's on the bottom. So we make it a negative. Uh, the 3x to the 5th is just going to stay. And this one right here is just 8 uh, times, right? There's like a 8 times 1. We can rewrite this as x to the 0 power. Remember, because any number to the 0 power is equal to 1. Um, so now we can go ahead and find the derivative of this. So f prime of x uh, is equal to, so oh, I wrote it over here already. Let me just go ahead and continue on this side. So I'm going to do negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2x, and I'm going to do 1 less than this. So negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, plus 5 times 3 gives us 15x, and 1 less than the 5 is going to give us a 4. And on this side right here, 0 times 8 gives me 0x. And 1 less than this before is going to be negative 1. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Okay. So now let's go ahead and take this and rewrite this as best as we can. So we have negative 2 over. This gets kicked to the bottom. So that's going to be x squared plus 
15x to the fourth. A zero times anything is just going to give me zero, so this is plus zero. Okay. Do I even need to write this? No. So what did we just learn? We learned that whenever you have a number, this is our pro tip, okay? Whenever you have a number and you're finding the derivative of it, it always just turns to zero, okay? And we're going to do another one just to make sure that we're good. So we have s of t, so our variable is t. Uh, so we have ds dt, which is the derivative of this function right here. So 2 times negative 4.9, okay, if I use my calculator, 2 times negative 4.9, I'm going to get negative 9.8. So negative 9.8t and 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. Um, I have plus, there's an imaginary 1 here, 1 times 3 is 3. Uh, t, 1 minus 1 is 0, minus, right, and the derivative of this again, this is x to the 0 power, so 0 times negative 5, remember, this is just going to become 0, uh, but let me just go ahead and prove that to you, so that's going to be 0 times 5, which is 0, uh, x to the negative 1, 0 times anything is just going to be 0, so this whole thing is going to cancel out. So my final answer is going to be negative 9.8t, okay, because I don't need to put the 1 there. Um, this is equal to t to the 0 is equal to 1. 1 times 3 is equal to 3. So ds dt is equal to negative 9.8t plus 3, okay. Um, if you need more examples, ask for some, uh, but we're going to go ahead and go back and do couple of example problems on this okay all right so we're going to go ahead and do this problem which is finding the derivative now at a specific point okay um, so remember derivative is gradient so if i draw y equals x squared it's a parabola um, if i want to find the derivative or the gradient at s x at x equals one um, i can see that this slope is going up so it's going to be a positive slope look at the slopes right um so we're going to go ahead and see what the derivative is so find the derivative at any point so remember how to do that right so f prime of x is equal to take that exponent kick it to the front so it's going to be 2x and do one less than the exponent before 2 minus 1 is 1 which is the same thing as 2x now we're going to find the derivative at that specific point, and we're just going to plug it in, right? So we want the derivative at x equals 1, so we're doing f prime of 1 is equal to, and now it's just going to be plug in the 1 in for x, so 2 times 1 is equal to 2, okay? I can do the same thing on my calculator. I just wanted to show you that the calculator does do this for you. So we're finding the derivative. Um, how do we get the derivative button? You hit math. You see option number eight is derivative, so you're going to hit option number eight. You're just going to put in your variable, which is dx. You're going to put in x squared, uh, and we want it at where x equals one. And you hit enter, and it gives you two, which is what we just did by hand. Okay, so we're going to do a couple more problems just to make sure that you are good with this. So we're going to find the derivative of this following function right here. So again, remember to look at it in parts. So f prime of x is equal to, take this exponent, kick it to the front, so it's going to be 2 times 1, which is 2x, 1 less than the one before, so that's going to be 2x is equal, oh, sorry, not equal to, I'm going to have a minus sign here. Um, let's go ahead and take this and write this a little bit more calculus friendly. So this is x squared minus 4x to the negative 1, right, because it's on the bottom, plus 3, okay? So we're going to go ahead and take this negative 1, kick it to the front. So negative 1 times negative 4 becomes a positive 4. Um, x, and this is to the negative second power because 1 less than that. And the derivative of a constant, again, is just 0. So we don't even need to write the plus 0. We could if we wanted to. Now let's go ahead and take this and write this a little bit better. So f of f prime of x is equal to... 2x to the first is just the same thing as 2x, uh, plus 4 over, right? This is negative, so it gets kicked to the front, okay? 
If you need some specific practice with this, uh, let me know. Pause the video, stop, and uh, let me go through it with you. And now we are finding it at x equals 2. So wherever we see, so we're doing f prime of 2. We're plugging 2 in for x. So this is going to be 2 times 2 plus 4 over 2 squared. Um, so I can go ahead and take my calculator and do that, right? 2 times 2. Close plus alpha y equals gets me the fraction button. So I put a 4 on top. 2 squared. Hit enter and I get it's equal to 5. Okay. If I want to do this with the calculator right from the get, again, math, derivative, which is option number 8, right? I'm using x as my variable. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my original function, which is x squared minus alpha y equals option number 1. Put the 4 over the x. And again, the calculator can do all of this for you, uh, plus 3. And we're finding the derivative at x equals 2, according to the problem right here. And hit enter, and it gives you this is about 5. Okay? Awesome. Um, we're going to do, there are some calculator tricks, which I just have been going through with you. This is just there, so you can see how to do this. And why should you care about derivatives, right? Like, how does it even come in handy? All right, so... Derivatives comes in handy in economics uh, to find like marginal cost. Marginal cost is the unit cost, uh, which is the cost of each of uh, each of the products that you have. In biology, anytime there's like rates of cell growth, uh, anything like that, um, that is why we use derivatives. Reaction rates in chemistry, uh, that is also derivatives, which remember rates. Um, in physics, uh, this is called kinematics, uh, which is displacement, velocity, acceleration. So if you have, for example, um, a function that has a, a placement or displacement, uh, the velocity of your value is going to be the same thing as the derivative of the displacement. And acceleration is the derivative of this, which is dv dt. Okay, so that's another reason uh, why we use derivatives uh, to find momentum, and they use it for a rocket to get to space. Okay, to find out like the mass that the rocket needs to fire at, uh, the rate that the rocket needs to fire at to get from wherever we are to space. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and try a couple of actual examples uh, that you will see on your IB exam. Um, so just pause and read through the question. All right, so for the first part of the question, uh, we have this function right here, um, and we are looking to see what the derivative is at that uh, first part for part A. All right, so just like what you are doing before, to find f prime of x, you take the exponent, kick it to the front, so that's going to be 3x, one less than the one before. Hopefully, this is becoming a lot easier. Uh, minus 2 times 6 is 12 x and 2 minus 1 is 1 that we don't need to put that there plus there's an imaginary 1 here 1 times 5 is 5 x uh, 1 minus 1 is 0 so put a 0 there and this here is a constant so remember this is like x to the 0 power 0 times 18 is 0 okay so we don't need to put that there so let's simplify this we have 3x squared minus 12x and 5 times 1 is equal to 5 okay so there is our derivative for part b there are two points at which the gradient where this is equal to 20 so we're going to do 3 3 x squared minus 12 x plus 5 is equal to 20 we're going to find out where that is so I always just use my calculator. So under y1, I plugged in my derivative, which is 3x squared minus 12x plus 5. Um, under y2, I'm going to plug in 20 right here. Um, I'm going to hit graph so I can make sure that I can see it. And there is the first one. I need to 
see where my 20 is. So that's going to be all the way up here. So I'm going to hit window. I want to change my Y because I want to see up higher to 20. So I'm going to go down right here. Let's just say I want to do 25 so I can definitely see where 20 is. So first one, 3x squared minus 12x plus 5 and x equals 20. Sorry, y equals 20. Good. So I want to see these two points of intersection. So I hit second calc, option number five. I'm going to take my mouse and move it over to around where it is. Hit enter, enter, enter. And I get my first value, right? x equals negative one. So I get x equals negative one. And <clears throat> to find the second one, I do the same thing again. Second trace, option number five. And now I move over to the right. Come on, you could do this. You could do this calculator. We'll move over to the right, as close to that intersection as possible. Somewhere there, hit enter, enter, enter. And it gives me x equals five is my second value. So x equals five. Um, and these are my, all I'm looking for are the x coordinates. So I just found them, x equals negative one and five. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and do question number two. So first thing again is I have my function and I need to find dy dx, which is the derivative. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So derivative is equal to take the two, bring it to the front. So this becomes negative two because there's an imaginary one here. Negative one times two is negative two. X, two minus one is one. I don't need to put that there. Uh, plus this is to the first power, one times eight is eight. X, one minus one is zero. Uh, and this here is a constant, which again can just go away. So I can write this as simple as negative two X plus eight. Okay, so there's my derivative. Write down the coordinates of the local maximum. Okay, so I went back, plugged in my original function into my calculator. And I'm looking for my maximum, which is this point right here. I can one, two, three, four. Looks like four something. So if I go to my calculator, four, four is our maximum. If you couldn't see it like that, like let's just say you're like, wait, what? Um, hit second trace. Option number four is maximum. So I'm going to play this silly game that what my calculator wants me to play. So I'm going to move over to the left of, you see this like little mountain, somewhere to the left of the mountain. I'm going to go over here somewhere, hit enter, go to the right of the mountain. So keep pressing to the right. Anywhere to the right of where that peak is of the mountain. Sure, somewhere around here. And then I want to go to where I think the maximum is going to be. So somewhere around here. And it tells me, right, maximum x equals 4, y equals 4. So four, four is my maximum, okay? Write down an integral representing the area of the shaded region. So this is a good review of what we did last time. Um, so an integral, remember, looks kind of like a fancy S. Uh, we are gonna go from two to six. So two to six, uh, we're gonna go ahead and write down our original function, which is negative X squared plus eight X minus 12, and you always have to write down the variable, which is dx, and then we're gonna take this, plug this into our calculator, so hit second quit. Um, I'm gonna hit math, do integral, which is option number nine, and this is where I put in my bound. I put in my negative x squared plus eight x minus 12. And then this is dx, okay? Hit enter, and it gives you 10 point barra. So if I wanna take this, I wanna write this as a fraction. So I hit math, option number one, hit enter, and I get 32 over three. So find the area of the shaded region, 32 over three is my answer for that. All right, we're rocking and rolling. Next one, the equation of the curve. So we're gonna find the derivative of this. And same thing, we're doing this with respect to dx. So four times three eighths, 
if you take that, plug that into the calculator, you're going to see it's the same thing as 3. Oh, I have to reset my cap, my computer. Give me a sec. All right, so 4 times 3 eighths. Again, you're going to multiply the two of them. You're going to get 3 over 2x. Uh, do one less than it was before, which is going to be 3 um, minus the 2 comes in front, so that's going to be negative 2x to the first power. And this is a constant, so that goes away. Um, and then part B says, find the coordinates of P, which is the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point P is equal to 8. So what we're going to do is we are going to find the coordinates of point P. So we're setting our function which is 3 over 2x to the third minus 2x we're setting it equal to 8 and we're looking to see what our x is okay so again I'm going to plug it into my calculator so I plugged in my derivative and I plugged in the 8 under y2 and I'm looking to see where these two intersect so there is my curve and this is my point of intersection right here so I hit second I hit trace, option number five. I'm going to go as close to that point as I possibly can. Of course, my calculator is going to take forever. There we go. Sure, somewhere around there. And I hit enter and I get two. So I get x equals two. So I want to find the coordinates of p. So to find out if x equals two, I'm going to plug two into my x wherever I see here I'm going to go back to my original so I'm doing 3 over 8 times 2 to the fourth minus 2 to the second plus 5 and when I plug that into my calculator I get that y is equal to 7 so therefore my coordinates are going to be 2 comma 7 okay uh, that's question number three question number four so again I'm going to find the derivative so I take my four multiply by 3 fourths and that's just going to give me 3x and 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 plus I take my 3 kick it to the front 3 times 1 third is equal to 1x 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 and this again is a constant so that goes away all right so this is the same thing as 3x to the third plus x squared um, so now I'm looking to see the gradient to, of the tangent to the curve C at point A is equal to 4. So I'm going to go 3x squared, no, 3x to the third, my bad. 3x to the third plus x squared is equal to 4. So I went ahead and plugged it into my calculator. And I'm looking for the point of intersection right here. Uh, second graph and I can see across from 1 4 4 my two y's are the same so I see that x equals 1 is where they intersect and now I'm taking the one plugging it back into the original um, when you do that you're going to see that y is equal to negative 11 over 12 if you cannot see that or you get a different answer please let me know so 1 comma negative 11 over 12 is going to be the coordinates of A. All right. Question number five, and then we're done. Uh, so for this one, we are looking for the derivative again. Um, so to do this, we are going to take this function and make it more calculus friendly. So this is the same thing as 2x to the negative 1 plus uh, this is x to the 4th over 8 minus 1.625. Um, let me just check this real quick. Okay, so as I was doing this, I realized that 1 half, I can leave it alone. So 1 half x to the negative 1, right? Because this x right here is on the bottom. So, and this is an exponent of 1 uh, plus this is the same thing as 1 over 8 x to the fourth minus 1.625. That will be easier for us to find our derivative of it. So I take negative 1 times 1 half, which is negative 1 half x to the, do 1 less than the negative 1, which is going to be negative 2, uh, plus 
4 times 1 is going to give us 4 over 8x, and then 4 minus 1 is going to be to the third power, and this again is our constant, so we're going to leave that alone. Um, I can go ahead and simplify this a bit, so this is negative 1 over 2, and this x to the negative power allows us to kick that x squared down to the bottom, plus 4 over 8 is the same thing as 1 half, so I can have 1 half x to the third power. And so I can leave it like that. So that can be the derivative of um, f. Calculate f of 1. So I'm going to go back to my original and plug in 1 there. It doesn't tell us to calculate f prime of 1 until part c. So f of 1 is going to equal, right, 1 over 2 times 1. We can use the store button. Uh, 1 to the 4th power over 8 minus 1.625. Take all of that, plug that into the calculator, and you're going to see that this is going to give us equal to negative 1 as our final answer for part B. For part C, now we're going to take 1 and plug it into our derivative, which is right here. So this is going to be the same thing as negative 1 over 2 times 1 squared plus yeah um, this is going to be plus 1 over 4 hold on let me just pause this real quick yeah so plus um, I'm plugging it into this right here. So plus 1 over 2. X is now 1 to the third power. And when I hit enter in my calculator, uh, this is going to give us 0 as the answer for f prime of 1. Um, for part D, they want us to do a sketch. All right, so I just plugged it into my calculator, but they want it over a specific window. So I'm going to hit window. Uh, they want our minimum to be from negative 3 to 3, so let me change that, negative 3 to 3. Um, fine, going up by 1, and I want my y's to go from negative 3 to 7, so negative 3 to 7. And I hit graph, and this is what you're going to have to do a sketch of. So you can just take this, let me see if it'll do this cleanly. So I'm taking my screen and this is what I'm going to sketch. Okay. Okay. Apparently it doesn't do it cleanly. Yes, I know. Oh, there we go. All right. So this is my sketch. Um, and that is going to be what I'm putting in for part D. Okay. Um, the next one says draw the tangent line. All right, so it says uh, draw it at the point where x equals 1. So x equals 1 here. So I'm going to go down uh, and I'm going to draw the line that's tangent to it. So I uh, should draw, try to do that as a straight line as possible. Um, a little bit better. Okay. Um, so that is going to be the answer for part E. The next one says find the equation of the tangent line of A. So I use my calculator maybe just to make it a little bit neater. So here's my line. Um, I just went ahead and put in negative 1 under my y2. So if I go to my graph, I can see that this is what I need to sketch for uh, part E. Uh, find the equation of the tangent line A. So I have y equals negative 1. Right, so I just went ahead and wrote that. And it says the graph of y equals f of x and the tangent line have a second intersection at point k. And I can see that, right? Here's the first intersection. Here's the second one. So I want to use my calculator. Hit second trace, option number 5, which is intersection. And I want to move over to that other point over whenever it feels like letting me do that. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to move as close to that point K, as they call it, as possible. Sure, somewhere around there. Hit enter, enter, enter. 
and I can see that my second number is going to be negative uh, 1.65. Okay, so if I put this to second, uh, to three significant figures, I see my point K is going to be negative 1.65. Okay, so those are all my answers to the questions. I'll go over this one more time. Make sure that you're comfortable with it. Uh, awesome. Great job.